الله أكبر الله أكبر الله now to ask a dear friend to come up and speak with you this evening, Ambassador Stroman, Norwegian Ambassador. Please welcome him. Thank you very, thank you very much, Jenna, and thank you very much for including us in this, uh, in this dinner tonight. Well, you know, um, I don't know if this was uh, uh, just by coincidence, but there is an old Nordic, at least, or Norwegian tradition that you have to get up and say thank you very much for the food. And particularly if you sit next to the host, it is your humble duty to do so. I don't know if uh, that comes as a surprise for many foreigners because we speak a lot and we go on for a long time. We can be quite quiet um, for a while, but you have to remember that distances were great in Norway and the weather was always bad. So when first someone gave, someone gave you the floor, you really were going to take it for a long, long time. But I promised I will not, um, I will not take the rest of the evening. I just want to say a few words of appreciation, not only for being in, uh, invited here tonight together with my wife, Cecilia, who sits over there, uh, but also um, some words of appreciation for the Rumi Forum, which is actually performing an increasingly serious task. I mean, there is a light touch to it when you see, when you see videos, but behind this there is uh, an intense seriousness because it's this kind of work that we need in the world that we live right now. This is actually one of the most burning issues of our times, and we all have our we all have our roles to play in this. We were reflecting uh, about this <coughs> at the table when over, over, over dinner here. Um, I can remember the first mosque being built in my country that I now represent. I remember it being built. We thought of it as a kind of a prayer house, which is, not, which is probably fairly accurate. Uh, kind of a prayer house. And there were many, many prayer houses in Norway. I grew up in, uh, in, in them, so why not? Um, but we were 95% Lutherans, and the rest were most. The rest were other kinds of Protestants, and then we had about a thousand Jews and a handful of Muslims. That was all. It has changed a bit, but I still represent probably one of the most homogeneous states in the world. We are probably still 80, at least 80% Lutheran, and I'd say 90%, uh, almost 90% uh, Protestant. So we need to meet things like this. We need to participate in the Rumi Forum. It's been my privilege to be here a couple of times, and I'm more than willing to come back. Um, in America, there is an expression which is kind of a bit strange to us, and this is no offense to the Americans that are in the room, but sometimes in America they say with a sort of a positive spin that you don't wear your religion on your sleeve. That's hard to translate into um, Scandinavian languages. Um, and it really, in a way, doesn't make sense in our tradition. I can understand it makes sense in the American tradition, but we actually do wear our religion on our sleeves, and we're kind of proud of it. That doesn't mean that you're not tolerant and open to all other religions and should not only through dialogue, but also through actually res uh, respect and, uh, <clears throat> and as you relate to them in any, 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 um, any, in, in, any, any human ac uh, activity. Uh, you should take these uh, these things uh, these things to uh, to heart. I, for instance, represent a country um, that is um, that has a state religion. You know, we are evangelical Lutherans. It's the first uh, the first paragraph in the in the constitution. It says that, uh, and if the king changes his religion, it's the same as an abdication. We will have to say goodbye to him. 
So we have all we all come from strange and different backgrounds. We have our peculiarities. We would never have come up with these things today, but this is uh, this is our heritage. So it's wonderful and it's great to meet someone else who comes from a completely different perspective, which I have uh, not only older respect for in the world, but also would like to learn more about and participate in the great undertakings that you have started. As I said, this is what the world needs. Uh, this is what the world needs, and I'm very happy and I pay, pay tribute to the fact that uh, the Rumi Forum is really doing their bit to this. Turkey, a very fascinating uh, country, very large by our, by our, 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 <coughs> but our scale, playing an increasingly important role. Keep up this good work, take on board all the rest of us. Thank you very much for your hospitality, your compassion and your generosity and for including us in this iftar uh, dinner. It actually means a, uh, means a lot to it. We do recognize that it's um, a kind of generous um, <coughs> expression um, of, sort of friendship that it is. So on behalf of all the guests, thank you very much. Now I would like to ask the president of the Rumi Forum, Mr. Emre Celik, to come up and say a few words. Uh, and then after that, we will be going into the other side uh, for some good Turkish coffee, Turkish delight, Turkish baklava. It's going to be a good old Turkish time over in the other side. So, and a beautiful art exhibit of Ebru, uh, water marbling. I know you will very much enjoy this. So thank you for joining us this evening. Emre Çelik. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I must clarify first, uh, Jenna, when she says the other side, she's talking about the room next door. Uh, I'm not too sure if everything on the, the other other side will always be Turkish, but the room, room next door. It may well be, it may not. We will wait and see. Uh, distinguished guests, thank you again, and I'm humbled by uh, both your presence. I, I thank you. Uh, sincerely and by the words of, of the ambassador and may I also in parallel to his words uh, suggesting uh, that we keep you on board you're all welcome to stay on board to assist as we uh, travel into the future uh, together collectively uh, working of course for a, a more prosperous local community and we believe as a result of these types of si similar activities a uh, more prosperous global community. I want to touch on our, uh, our honorary president and as the ambassador it's on the, uh, it's on the clip that we showed and his words are very pertinent I think so he's, he's fortunate uh, in that uh, these are very important words that he said a lot of good things happen in the world that a lot of people don't know about. And I think this is reflective particularly in regards to uh, the work that we do collectively but in particular as a wider global civic movement that we are a part of usually referred to as the Gulen movement we hear about all the the nasty things that unfortunately those people that uh, pertain or are perceived to be to be Muslim we know of their the groups that they belong to uh, we hear of the violence and what have you but on the other side of the co coin there is a group of individuals motivated by the ideas of Gulen uh, in terms of peace building, in terms of conflict resolution through uh, the wider global context. The Gulen movement is active in more than 120 countries of which 110 of them have a thousand schools. Uh, that is the first major aspect of what the Gulen movement is involved in but not too many people know of this, particularly as a group of individuals predominantly of Muslim background, motivated by their faith, a thousand schools. Secondly, dialogue organizations like ours, 300 to 350 in a similar number of uh, countries, it just in uh, the region that we uh, look after, the states that you saw, we have uh, 10, 12 chapters and we have sister organizations in 50 states. We've come now together under a federation of 180 organizations uh, the Turkic uh, American Alliance just in the United States but again similar organizations in Asia, Australia, Europe, uh, Africa and Latin America as well. Thirdly there are media groups I won't dwell on on those 
and welfare and health organisations such as hospitals, but all collectively motivated by uh, Gulen's ideas. The West and academia refer to as Gulen movement, but we ourselves in the Turkish word refer to ourselves as hizmet, which means service. And this is very important within the context of our tradition, our faith, of selflessly serving others, expecting nothing in return other than pleasing one's fellow creation. I wanted to highlight that particularly after the ambassador's words that I hear resonates often when I watch that video. I tell you, a lot of good things do happen and it's important that uh, the wider community knows about it. Ramadan, of course, is, is very special in terms of personal reflection, in terms of increased spiritual awareness, uh, in terms of a oneness with the Creator. But very important aspect is what we see here today collectively is a social aspect of bringing together family, friends and strangers. Uh, we co-sponsored uh, our Ramadan Iftar tent in Fairfax, our Fairfax chapter with our friends at Atfa. And this is a very important tradition. It may exist in other Muslim societies. I can only speak of the Turkish tradition where Ramadan tents are set up uh, in the hundreds uh, across Turkey in large cities to help not only the less fortunate but passers-by, travellers, strangers, families, etc. to share in this feast. To share in this feast. And we did something like this in Fairfax over three, four evenings where six to seven hundred people. Of course a large proportion were Muslims but they brought their friends, their neighbours, their children, etc. to see in the tradition of what it means to share a meal with a stranger, with somebody that is different, somebody that may not be American, someone whose English may not be the best, someone who was not of the uh, Anglo-Saxon Christian background, but to be able to sit around the table, around the Abrahamic table and share in a meal, which is a very important tradition that goes back uh, through to Abraham, according to the Muslim tradition we know of the story of Abraham who never sat for a meal on his own. He would either go foodless or he would find someone, be it a stranger, to sit with and share in that meal. A rabbi friend of mine told me a similar story where Abraham ha had set up his tent at the crossroads of two important streets so that everybody passing by would enter his tent and enjoy his hospitality. We would like to keep that uh, tradition going. Consider this our tent, consider this your tent, consider the roomy, serv uh, uh, roomy farm at your service. Uh, we welcome you aboard and we look forward to continued happier days together. Uh, thank you, have a most blessed evening and a most prosperous continuing 2010. Thank you once again.